So my name is Jim Hogan. I'm the project manager for the Tacoma LNG project for Puget Sound Energy. The Tacoma LNG project is uh, really serves two functions. Uh, number one, it allows us to store natural gas in a liquid format for our customers so that we can reuse that gas in the wintertime when there's periods of peak demand, and that's called peak shaving. LNG or, or methane is the exact same uh, natural gas that heats your homes, um, and methane is the cleanest burning fossil fuel. The second uh, exciting part of the project is this is uh, also uh, a plant that will provide LNG as a transportation fuel for uh, the marine industry initially and hopefully also other heavy transportation industries. With changes in emissions regulations, uh, we're seeing that uh, many shipping companies around the world that operate large ocean-going vessels are converting over to methane as a fuel. LNG is the fuel of choice for ships that are converting to methane. In around 2011 or so, Tote Maritime Alaska came to us and, and asked us if we would be interested in being a supplier of LNG for their ships. And we'll have an 8 million gallon uh, tank and then we have the ability to produce 250,000 gallons per week of LNG. And I started working with Dave Phelps and his team at Geoengineers uh, back in 2012. Um, a big part of the role uh, for Geoengineers has been the geotechnical design uh, of this facility. And we have just started our test piles uh, for our ground improvement project here, which will involve the installation of about 2,500 auger cast in place piles. I'm Dave Phelps with Geoengineers. I'm a principal geotechnical engineer in charge for the Tacoma LNG project. Geoengineer's role on this project really has been to define the seismic criteria for the site, to come up with a strategy for mitigating the seismic risks, um, which include liquefaction potential, lateral spreading, um, and to design the, a ground improvement program that will support the, the LNG facility that's being designed by uh, Chicago Bridge and Iron. This is probably one of the pro largest projects I've ever worked on as far as scope, and we've involved dozens of people from geoengineers and all different aspects of this project from doing the specific site investigation, drilling the borings, collecting samples, doing um, seismic shear wave velocity testing. We have taken that information and, and used it in our designs for the mitigation, the, the design of the, um, the ground improvement program. Our relationship with PSC is, is, has been really excellent. It always has been and it remains. They, they've trusted us to work with them in the selection of the specific contractors and to write the specific specifications and put together plans working with the civil designers that meet the project needs. This is a, an alluvial tide flat with hundreds and hundreds of feet of very soft, very loose, uh, potentially liquefiable soils that will shake and move during, seismic, uh, during a seismic event. King Chin and the performance-based engineering group at Geoengineers did all the detailed seismic uh, modeling. Once we understood what the constraints were and, and how much movement we could tolerate, we then worked with uh, PSE to come up with an acceptable ground improvement program that would support the facility and all the different pieces of it. That includes the eight million gallon tank and then all of the process area. And we had to consider everything from the project site to the waterways beyond um, because of the potential for movement. And there's also you know, a, a, a pipeline that goes from the tank across the, the peninsula to the, the adjacent waterway where uh, the, the fuel will be transferred to the ships to, to fuel the ships. Um, there are design seismic levels that um, are defined and they're, they're pretty stringent. They're a 2475 year event that is a very rigorous event that's defined by the local geology, the Cascadia subduction zone, the Tacoma Fault, the Seattle Fault, all of those things are considered. The effects of that shaking are modeled specifically to this site so that we can understand during that earthquake as the ground shakes and the pore water pressure increases and the strength decreases, what's gonna happen? We looked at a number of options for providing, uh, for mitigating liquefaction and lateral spreading. Uh, conventional pile foundations were considered, but because the thickness of the, of the liquefile so soils are so deep here, um, a conventional pile foundation would never find any bearing. So basically we have to create a raft of ground improvement that does the job. We looked at stone columns, other um, techniques where we inject rock into the ground. Those were precluded because of an agreement with the Department of Ecology to not create preferential pathways for potential contamination movement. So what we ended up agreeing to on were uh, what we call rigid inclusions, or more commonly auger cast pile, which you can see going on behind us here. Um, they auger down to 80 or 100 feet depth, depending on where we're at on the site. 
and then inject grout to create a three foot diameter grout column that's then cut off near the ground surface. A cap of clean crushed rock goes over that to create a, a bearing layer. And then on top of that, the, the foundation designers uh, for, from CBI will um, construct the foundations for the tank and the process area. Those, are, those become almost a conventional spread footing type foundation, but it's on a very detailed and very extensive ground improvement program below so that all the performance criteria are met. Uh, my name is Lucia Astorga and I am a staff geotechnical engineer. My role here is to observe all the construction that's going on. We started uh, a few days ago drilling our test piles. Well, it actually takes about nine minutes to go in to drill, to drill about 100 feet. That's the ones we've been installing lately. And if everything goes well, about a half hour to be able to withdraw and fill the column with grout. And there's other demolition and uh, excavation of ponds and removal of other um, contaminated things around the site. As you can see, we are um, almost complete with demolition of all the buildings on the site. It's a 30-acre site and we've had to take down about uh, half a dozen buildings. Um, other team members, Rick Moore and, and others, have been working on um, materials management, um, stormwater compliance. We've created, we've, we've essentially contained all the stormwater on the site within a berm so that it's collected and managed. And we're also responsible for making sure that the um, water quality compliance uh, requirements are met and we have a very shallow groundwater table here that's one of the challenges it's about five feet below grade during construction all of the rainwater any any groundwater that we have to move for excavations is contained tested and then properly discharged in accordance with our permits with the city of Tacoma. Well, GEO has been a, a very integral part of our team um, they've been with me the longest of all of our contractors and engineering firms on this project. Building this plant represents a least cost uh, solution to our growing gas supply need. This plant gives, again, uh, a level of assurance that on cold days like today, uh, we'll have adequate gas supply to meet our customers' needs.